Turn your Bible to Book of Joshua, chapter 13, verse 1 through 7. Book of Joshua, chapter 13, verse 1 through 7. Verse 1 through 7. We're going to hear God's word all together. Here's the word of God. Joshua 13. Now Joshua was old and advanced in years. And the Lord said to him, You are old and advanced in years, and there remains yet very much land to possess. This is the land that yet remains, all the regions of the Philistines and all those of the Gusherites, from the Shehor, which is east of Egypt, northward to the boundary of Ekron, it is counted as Canaanite. There are five rulers of the Philistines, those of Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron, and those of the Avim in the south, all the land of the Canaanites, and Merah, that belongs to the Sidonians, to Aphek, to the boundary of the Amorites, and the land of the Gibalites, and all Lebanon toward the sunrise, from Baal Gad, below Mount Hermon, to Libo Hamath. All the inhabitants of the hill country from Lebanon to Misrafath Ma'im, even all the Sidonians, I myself will drive them out from before the people of Israel. Only allot the land to Israel for an inheritance, as I have commanded you. Now therefore divide this land for an inheritance to the nine tribes and half the tribe of Manasseh. Amen. Um, There's a reason why we are reading this book of Joshua. uh, Because we want to carry out the mission given by God. So there must be purpose and reason for us, for us to leave uh, on earth, right? So that's our mission. As we carry out our mission, uh, there's a, something that we need to challenge. Why? There's a field and um, the land that we need to conquer. Then, every day, we are living our lives with the purpose given by God, not given by the world. We are motivated to live, to to be diligent, sometimes by the motivation that the world try to give us but not the way that God has given us so we need to know how to pursue our lives how to really carry out our mission in our daily lives sometimes you know you, you're going to face all the challenges you, you need to make right because we need to conquer we need to take possession of the promised land there are two parts uh, to the book of Joshua. The first one is chapter 1 through 12. That's the conquest of Canaan. The second part, it's going to be 13 to 24. Division of the land. Dividing the land uh, for an inheritance. So, up up to um, chapter twelve, we we've seen how God led His people to conquer the land, right? And now we're going to divide the land for an inheritance to every tribe except. Levite. So we're going to get to that point. Um, still, he is teaching his people. He is training his people how to conquer, how to really um, challenge themselves in this uh, conquest of the promised land. In our reality, we are having tons of um, emotion. Sometimes we got so angry, we get frustrated, 
we get disappointed, we get discouraged and dismayed. Um, you know, these emotions are coming in and coming out. So we need to deal with this. Even though we need to carry out the mission every day, we need to be active to carry that out. But there's something that is holding us back from this. So we need to know how to deal with this, right? Frustration. Disappointment. You could name um, the emotions that you often have. I want you to think about why. Anxieties. Why you ended up having these emotions and you're having a hard time with. Because we try to do something and then we face some obstacles or problems and crises in our lives. You see what I'm saying? Like we um, learned... In our covenant journey, in our, you know, work of faith, we're going to face constant battle. But we think that we could do, we could fight on our own strength, on our own ways. Then these emotions will come across. So God is teaching. This is not the way that you need to conquer. You need to carry out. It's not about you. It's not about you. Your strength, your ability, your talent is not about you. So I want you to really uh, think about the reason why you have these emotions within in a personal relationship, at your workplace, at your school. So you have various kinds of emotions come across in your daily lives. And then this is the hindrance for us to carry out our mission. Today, if you look at verse 1, Now Joshua was, was old and advanced in years. And the Lord said to him, personally, you're old. <laughs> you're old and advanced in years. Um, imperfection. You know, think about Joshua and think about Moses. Right? They were the type of coming Messiah. They are not just regular, just normal individuals. They are the type. Moses, Joshua, they are pointing to the work of Jesus Christ and person of Jesus Christ. So their lives are so significant. Right? What they did was pointing to the work, the messianic work, messianic mission. Especially Moses. He was mediator between God and his people. But God told Joshua, you're old. You're not young anymore. Even though we want to be forever 21. I'm still think that I'm 21 or, you know, beginning of eight, that age. Uh, if I see myself in the mirror, I get so frustrated. <laughs> and these days I'm going through really uh, strange physical condition. Um, it's hard to accept those realities. Um, 
I haven't played basketball like, for two years. Uh, I, from like in seventh graders, I start playing, you know, basketball every week. Um, even before, like you know, two years ago, uh, I had a 24 fitness membership. The reason why I get it, I don't want to work out. I don't want to lift them, you know, heavy weights. I go there to play basketball, pick up games. That's it. <laughs> you know, if I think myself, like, oh, I could get the ball. I could get the rebounds. Because I'm, I feel like you know, I'm 21. That's why I get injured all the time. Uh, I gave up on that already. But um, we still think that we could do something. Even though we experience lots and lots of failures, mistakes, and God is telling us, you're sinful, you're wicked, you're not perfect. Even with the written law, God exposed how wicked we are, how imperfect we are. And we still think that we, are, we can do something. And God is you know, telling Joshua, you're old. If you think about Joshua, he's a great leader, true leader, right? He led his people to the promised land, crossing the Jordan River, taking down all the, you know, cities, 31 kings, seven tribes. But he was able to do it all. Joshua got old. We don't really know exact age of Joshua at the time, but many scholars are saying that it was about 100 years. <laughs> and he died 110. And then around this age, of course he's old. But if you compare it to Moses, Moses died 120. 20 years younger than Moses. But God came to him and you're, you're old. If you look at 1 Kings 1, verse 15, it says David was very old, but he was only about 70. What's the standards of God to tell people you're old or very old? Not just physically, but also mentally and spiritually. It is connected with your mission. Even though Moses lived up to 120, compared to that, Joshua was really young. <laughs> but God told him, you're, you're old at the age of 100. That means your mission is complete. Even though Joshua might really want to carry that out, he wants to, he might want to complete that conquest. But he says, You are old and advanced in years, and there remains yet very much land to possess. We might think that he, he complete the conquest, right? But God has remained. Many lands to purchase yet. We need to be sensitive to God's time. 
not our own time. Don't compare yourself to other people. Oh, at the age of 30, at the age of, you know, uh, 40, people are doing, you know, this. people just have accomplished great things. Look at myself. We might, you know, we have tendency to compare ourselves to other people and get frustrated and disappointed and anxious. God has perfect time scheduled for you. When did you get saved? I really wanted to come here earlier than the year that I came here, right? I wish I I was I could be born I would be born in here. If I want to really carry out English ministry in here, then I'll be it would be perfect or better than you know coming here as an international student, learning English as a second language. I, I had a lot of wishes and expectations, but that's not. God's plan. That's not how God fulfilled His plan for us. He has His time and His ways. We all have desire to live longer or to complete the things that we want to do, but we cannot. That's why we need to put down our expectations and standards as soon as possible. That's when we stand before God who is perfect. Our plan is imperfect. Our ability is imperfect. Nothing is perfect. So we need to put down our schedules, plans, desire, you know, expectations. This is really important. This is what the Bible says. This is truth. Calvin said, total depravity. We are totally depraved. Nothing good is inside of us. That's what it means. You are old. You have limits. You are not God. You're part of creation. You're old. You cannot be young forever. Even though your life is pointing to you the work of Jesus Christ, person of Jesus Christ, which is amazing. Think about it. Look at his, you know, Chris's life. And people are saying, oh, his life is pointing to the life of Jesus Christ. How amazing it is. All the work he has done is pointing to the work of Jesus Christ. Amazing. I never imagined that kind of you know, life. But he was. But even the type, those types, Moses, David, even Joshua, they're imperfect. So being old is not so much depend on our actual number of age, years, but state of person. And it is related to God's mission and time and His ways. There are many areas that needed to be subdued. Despite Joshua's great success in many conquests, he led a significant amount of land remained outside of control of Israel. Especially uh, this Mediterranean Sea, right? And this is uh, Sea of Galilee and Jordan River and this is that sea. So this part, this area needed to be subdued. 
we just read the scripture, verse 1 through 7, right? God named all the uh, cities here. Of course, northern and southern area of this land was conquered by Joshua and Israel. But this part still remained. Land of Philistine, land of Gerish, Geshrite, the land east of Egypt to the north. The five key Philistine cities, Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, and Gath, and Akron. And those cities here. Why then? That was my question. Why? Uh, I think God is trying to tell Joshua and his people, you are not God. Even though you experience success, victories, not because of your ability, you need to know who is a creator. You are part of creation. If we try to be shown by people, He's going to block that because we are not. There are lots of areas of our lives to be subdued before God and His commands. We are saved, right? That that has been conquered by the name of Jesus Christ, the work of Jesus Christ. We got saved. We became children of God. We, are, we became like people of God the citizen of God's kingdom, but still there are areas that needed to be, needs to be subdued within our lives. We, might, we wish, oh, I want to be perfect to follow God. There's no perfect life or work of faith on earth. There are battles to be won the enemies to be subdued. Like I said, we're going to have constant war against these areas up until the Christ's second coming. So, so if you think that you are, you have a lot of problems, spiritually, spiritually like, you know, unsubdued, uh, unconquered areas in, in your life, that's the sign. Oh, you need to place yourself in the rightful position. Don't get discouraged and frustrated and disappointed. That's time for you to acknowledge who you are. We need to make a clear distinction between creator and the creation. Our God is creator. We are creation. So uh, while we are taking possession of the promised land, this is really important lesson that we need to take. God is going to tell you, you're old. You're sinful. You're wicked. That's not how God frustrates us or discourages us. No. By acknowledging who we are, we're not going to go, go through these emotions. Just acknowledge who you are, who God is. Even though we are imperfect, we are in perfect God's plan. Even though our plan is might, might be really imperfect, but God's plan is perfect, and we are inside of that plan. 
We're inside of His covenant. God sovereigns over everything, including our lives, from the beginning to the end of it. So, from the beginning, your birth to your death, God has design, will, and plan for you. He's leading you in His perfect time schedule. If you face unexpected realities, unwanted realities, you need to acknowledge that you are imperfect. That's why that's the time for you to kneel down before God. Come to the perfect God. Almighty God. Sovereign God. Instead of dealing with those realities on your own ways. Our lives are in God's hands. We just sang the song, I commit again. Why? Our lives in your hands. God controls the conquest of Canaan. God promised that He would drive them out from before the people of Israel. If you look at it, um, verse 6, second half of that, it says, I myself would drive them out from before the people of Israel. This is emphasized there. I myself. So, Hebrew literature, how you emphasize? Repeating the same word. I myself would drive them out from before the people of Israel. You might think that there are still areas that needed to be subdued, but still you are in God's promise and covenant. And he said, I myself will drive them out before the people of Israel. He promised that. And as you know, he will keep it. The conquest of Canaan, conquest of promised land, I don't know what, what you can name the promised land, your future, your career. He said, I will drive them out. He's in control. And God commanded Joshua to divide the land for an inheritance for the nine tribes and half the tribe of Manasseh. So Joshua's job changed. He no longer are there to fight, but they, he need to divide the land for an inheritance to the tribes. Our mission to complete is listen to God and His absolute plan. God came to Joshua personally. Just like He came to Joshua in the beginning of the book of Joshua. He was terrified. And He said, Do not worry. Do not fear. Do not dismay. Be strong and courageous. Personally, he came to Joshua. This time, too. He came to Joshua personally and he said, You're old. But he said, Not anymore you need to fight, but you need to divide the land. So you need to listen to God and His absolute plan and perfect plan. We need to give our full attention to Him when He speaks to us personally. So, this is time for you to hear God's voice personally. 
He knows what you're going through, your time schedule. Listen and confess your faith. Joshua was obedient to God's command of dividing the land for inheritance to the nine tribes and half the tribe of Manasseh. This is act of faith, if you think about it. He lists out all the names of the cities. That's area that needed to be subdued. They didn't conquer those areas yet. But God commanded Joshua to divide those lands for an inheritance to nine tribes and half the tribe of Manasseh. This is act of faith. You will see from chapter 13, Joshua was obedient and he divided the land, including these areas. Of course, you might have some areas in your life that needs to be subdued before God. You need to divide the land, even including this area, or He will drive them out. You need to have an act of faith. You need to confess your faith. It's interesting if you look at it. They're living in there. You know, those Philistines, they're living in there. And God said, you need to divide this land for tribes. That's my land. That's act of faith. Not only just confess your faith, act it out. Live it out. You could see. Um... The following text, those are the records uh, that Joshua divided the land to the specific tribes. Some of them, uh, they didn't conquer up to the time of David. Interesting. So he has his time schedule. So uh, we need to be kind of sensitive too. His time, His ways, um, His plan. So, um, I'm not sure where you are right now. What kind of emotions that you are uh, having, experiencing. But I want you to analyze that and then go to this. We are imperfect. We're not perfect. Um, wish we could be young, you know, forever, but that's not the end. Not not the case, right? That means we need to admit that I'm old. I'm 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 doing it. Uh, I become more vulnerable, humble before God and before people. Uh, that's why I really like to kneel down before God, stand before God, and asking and seeking His kingdom and His righteousness. Um, I'm so hungry. I'm desperate for His guidance uh, within my life. So don't come up with your own expectation and standard. You need to place yourself in the rightful place, your creation. Put that down. And then kneel down before God and stand before God. We are in His perfect plan and will. He's sovereign over everything, including our lives. And He controls our conquest, our work of faith, our covenant journey. So we commit again into his hands let's pray together